It's officially that time of the year again. We've got pre-orders and another $100 exotic. Now we covered Quicksilver last year, and let me just say, Quicksilver at first wasn't really that exciting. I mean, it was good, but then over time, it got substantially nastier, earning the name Quicksilver. This year though, when you pre-order Final Shape, more specifically the Deluxe Edition with the Annual Pass, you get Tessellation. Now, this weapon is not like your normal energy weapon. And if you notice, this weapon doesn't even have an elemental type. Now, does this mean it's a connection weapon in the energy slots? Actually, no. Its main exotic perk, property undecidable, states that this weapon instrument topology adapts its damage type to match your equipped subclass. And final blows grant grenade energy. Now, final blows granting grenade energy is a nice touch here, and it synergizes really well with this exotic, more specifically with its trait that we're going to touch on in just a moment. But the main thing here is how this weapon changes its elements based on your equipped subclass. This is why it appears as if it has no element in the collection screen. Now, in your inventory, as you can see here, it'll actually switch to your subclass element automatically. And this is different to weapons like Hard Light and Borealis that require you to hold reload in game to switch their elements. This works on its own without requiring you to do anything else other than switching up your subclass. Now, quick side notes, the glimmer within the crystals on the top of the weapon will change colors depending on the subclass that you have equipped. Nice little detail there, Bungie. Now, the craziest part about property undecidable is that it also applies to your darkness subclass. This means that if you decide to run Stasis or Strand as your subclass, this fusion, an energy slot weapon, will still switch to a Darkness element. An element that's normally only found on Kinetic slot weapons. This means that for the first time in Destiny 2, if you're running a Darkness subclass, you'll then be able to run three weapons, all within the same element in each slot. And for Surge environments, you can see where this is beneficial. This can open up a lot of build opportunities. And even outside of the Darkness subclasses, Property Undecidable allows for a lot of synergy within your already existing builds. Now, Tessellation also comes with a second part, Property Irreducible. This states that if you hold your reload button, you'll consume your grenade to load a large projectile shape language that generates an element explosion on impact. Now, Property Undecidable is a cool gimmick for this weapon, but if all you care about is performance, Property Irreducible is the perk to focus on. It works exactly as it states. When you have full grenade energy, you hold your reload button and Tessellation will essentially absorb your grenade into itself. Now, quick side notes, the animation for this is sick. Props to the artist at Bungie for putting this together. It's mesmerizing just the watch, especially considering how it changes depending on your subclass. Now, after activating this part, Tessellation essentially shoots a mini rocket. Now, keep in mind, it still has charge time, but once fired, a slow firing projectile is released from the weapon, similar to how a rocket does. This projectile travels in a straight line and it explodes on impact, dealing both impact damage and AOE explosion damage. Now, how strong is this projectile in PvE. Believe it or not, it can actually put out some really nice damage numbers. Here at Carl, it's normal bolts hit for the same 6,417 damage per bolt that other adaptive fusions hit, so nothing crazy there. The projectile is where things get nutty. Tessellation's projectile was hitting for two different numbers. One was 7,878 damage as its impact damage, and then a whopping 137,058 damage as its explosion damage, coming out to a total of 144,000 936 damage per direct hit. For a single shot of a special weapon, this is some pretty crazy damage. One of the kings of single shot burst damage is Inaga's Burden with its catalyst and Hone Edge times four hits for 160,132 damage against Carl. Tessellation and its projectile only hits 15,000 less damage than that. Benefits here is that Tessellation, of course, doesn't require precision hits. It can also clear a room of adds with that shot and it only consumes one ammo. However, downside, it consumes your grenade. But of course, we're going to talk about ways to get around that. Now, keep in mind, final blows from that projectile will end up giving you about 20% of your grenade energy back, which is why with our moth build here, it synergizes so well. Now, there is a strong case to be made here for this weapon purely because of its projectile damage potential, and it starts to look even better when comparing to some other weapons. A base adaptive frame rocket such as Apex Predator with a spec mod and impact casing hits for 29,869 impact damage and 95,140 explosive damage, coming out to 125,014 total damage. Now, yes, a legendary rocket can fire a lot more consistently than Tessellation's projectile would be able to, and would also have other damage perks as well. But the point here is to just show off Tessellation and its ability to do this much damage. Comparing it to, say, something like Yoden, which is another fusion rifle, Yoden hits for 10,362 impact damage and 33,987 explosion damage for a total of 44,300 
349 damage. Now, of course, there's some extra burn ticks in there. If you got the catalyst, you have incandescent. These are all great things, and I'm not trying to bring Yoden down or any of these other weapons down. This is purely a comparison, guys, and I hope you're realizing how much damage output Tessellation is able to do. Now, the question that everyone was asking today, does Tessellation dip into our subclass verbs? Does it apply Jolt when you're on an arc subclass? Volatile for Void, Scorch for Solar. Currently, right now, guys, throughout all of our testing, it does not dip into any of our subclass verbs. Even when you see the explosion damage for, say, something like Arc, what you're seeing is the weapon itself getting that explosion damage, similar to something like Chain Reaction. That is not Jolt, though. Jolt is not being applied. And the same for Scorch on Solar, Volatile for Void, etc. Now, keep in mind, that is perfectly setting it up for the exotic catalyst in Final Shape. In my opinion, the best exotic catalyst Tessellation can get for Final Shape is to synergize with those subclass verbs, to be able to apply Jolt or Scorch or whatever when rocking those subclasses. That would be disgusting. Now, what that means is when we actually choose a build for now, we're really not going to be utilizing builds that dip into those subclass verbs as Tessellation itself is not able to take advantage of that. And the second thing we're not going to do is dip into exotics that greatly benefit our grenades, that being benefiting the lethality of those grenades. Keep in mind, guys, you're actually consuming your grenade. So you may actually have all these things building up the potency of your grenade, but because you're actually using your grenade to amplify this weapon, that damage is lost. So the exotics you really want to be utilizing here for Tessellation are things that are actually going to be buffing Tessellation's damage outright, or exotics that give you an extra grenade. Again, more grenades means more supercharged shots here for Tessellation. So starting with our Titans, Armatarium, of course, is a great option, considering it gives you an extra grenade charge. So therefore, more charges here for Tessellation. Another exotic to consider on Titan is Halifire Heart, which recently got a change, allowing for the creation of more sunspots, with its new perk stating that solar takedowns while standing in a sunspot creates a sunspot. Now, the main benefit here, guys, is that it greatly improves the recharge rate of your solar abilities while your super is charged. Since sunspots actually give you increased ability regeneration while standing in them, and Halifire also greatly improves your ability regeneration. You see where this is going, guys. Now, for just flat-out buffs, Heart of Endless Light is also a good option. Now, for my hunters, Foe Tracer is also an interesting option, considering the most recent rework Foe Tracer has received. Its original function has actually been absorbed into Knucklehead Radar. Foe Tracer now states that damaging a powerful Gabbatin or Guardian with an ability grants you a temporary bonus to weapon damage matching your subclass type, and defeating that target with a weapon matching the damage type of your subclass creates an elemental pickup. Now, while this doesn't necessarily get you more grenades, unless you're using like Arc or Solar for the grenade energy from Ionic Traces and Fire Sprites, it could still have some pretty cool synergy with the way Tessellation matches up with your subclass. Foe Tracer gives you a 25% weapon boost at times four that Bungie has been putting on a lot of exotics here lately. And again, this exceeds that of Surge Mods. So even though it doesn't stack with weapon surges, it's a good way here to boost Tessellation's damage. And then once you boost it, you can get the supercharged shots and really do some crazy damage. Now you can use Mask and Backers in the same way on Stasis as that too got its rework. You got Young Homkar Spine, and there's a lot of ways you can build into this with Ember of Torches, knock them down. You can get your grenades back really fast here. You got Shinobu's Vow, which gives you double skips. But keep in mind, guys, what do those two exotics have in common? They greatly amplify your grenades. If I'm going to use those exotics, I actually want to use those exotics for their function. But this takes us to our Hunter exotic for this season, Moth Keeper's Wraps. Now, we've already done a live review of this exotic with the new seasonal grenade launcher. Fantastic synergy with the creations of moths. And keep in mind, this is that same level of synergy that Weapons of Sorrow and Necrotic Grip has. Mothkeeper's Wraps and Exodus has that level of synergy. But the reason why we're using it here with Tessellation is when you combine it on Strand with Widow Silk Aspect, this gives you all of these grenade charges. You can actually have up to three entire grenade charges at once. Again, I really do like the moths and you can continue using the moths whenever you need, but I was utilizing this today, guys, and it was fantastic. Now, Frosties are also a good option as they can actually top off your abilities while sprinting. Gur Falcons is a good option, even though it won't directly give us more grenade energy. Volatile here is always really nice to have. And of course, you can combine them with things like Echo of Starvation. We're picking up a Void Breach or an Overpower, Grants Devour, and we'll be getting that extra bit of grenade energy from Devour each time we get a takedown. With a solid Void build with Gur Falcons, Devour is easy to keep up and can pair really well here with this fusion. Now for my Warlocks, where do I begin? Crown of Tempest, I am Another World, Nezrak Sin, Verity's Brow, Fallen Sunstar, Seeking Filaments, with its Devour when casting Rifts, can all help you regenerate your grenade energy. You also have Nothing Manacle, 
Turtles, Osmeo Mancy, which gives you a second grenade charge. And of course, a forgotten exotic for many, Starfire Protocol, which gives you that second grenade charge for fusions. Now, one of the big questions we had earlier, what about Sunbracers? Considering how many grenade charges it gives you upon getting that melee kill, could you make it work here? Personally, guys, it wasn't working for us. The animation time is just too long. The time you actually load the grenade in, get the shot out, you're pretty much out of time. But keep in mind, when it comes to exotics like Sunbracers, they're so good at what they do because of the buffs they give to your grenades, which is what I would want to lean in more if I was using those exotics. Now, how does Tessellation perform in PvP? In its normal form, it's kind of meh, no lie. There are many other options I would choose, whether it's Tekken, Snorri, even Main Ingredients still, Glacial Chasm, and being an adapter frame fusion, it can kill up to 16.5 meters. The main thing is consistency, of which it really didn't have. Now, its projectile does have the ability to one shot inside of PvP. However, keep in mind, it does not have the same tracking capabilities of say something like Yoden, and it moves fairly slowly. And unless the enemy is right on top of you, you can actually get out of the way. Granted, this may be a different story on console. People on PC are really scooting fast inside of Crucible, and considering it has no level of tracking, nine times out of 10, enemies could just get out of the way. With that being said though, the projectile does have pretty much infinite travel distance. We literally were shooting it all the way up to 50 meters, and yes, it was still getting the kill. So a fun weapon, but again, nothing meta shaking inside of PvP. So guys, that is it for our Tessellation Deep Dive. I think this weapon is going to continue to get better as we get closer to Final Shape, similar to like Quicksilver Storm. And when we finally get its exotic catalyst in Final Shape, I really feel like this weapon is going to get substantially better. The foundation here is solid. It's unique in so many ways. The artwork I love and its design. If we get some subclass verb synergy, oh, Tessellation is going to be one nasty fusion. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. Oh,